guys, and welcome back to another episode of Outcast to Icons. And as always, guys, if you are enjoying the series, please do drop a like on the video. It'd be brilliant if we could get it over 150 like always. Um, firstly, <clears throat> I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you to everyone that came to my stream on Friday night. Um, was it Friday? It was Friday, yeah. Um, I had a fantastic time, and I hope those of you that came and stopped by did too. I do apologise for the, the issues we had at the start. Um, also, I apologise I couldn't put this thank you sooner. It's just that I'd already got my videos recorded for the weekend so that I could work on other things, like the stream and whatnot. Uh, plus, I had some other stuff I needed to take care of. Um, but seriously, thank you so much. It was really, really good fun. Um, we played a lot of Portsmouth. A lot of weird stuff happened. Um, it was just a good, good time. And it's just great to talk to you, some of you guys, um, without having to sort of spend ages in the Comments. It was nice to just be able to reply to things immediately. Um, I like that kind of interaction. I much prefer it, um, really. I almost, I don't know, what, there was no way that would work with YouTube. I just wish that there was some way that was possible. Um, but there you go, guys. Um, also, a couple other things. People, I still get comments saying, you know, when are you going back to double uploads? I just don't know. Like, I'll do it when I feel like I can do it, basically. Or it might never do it. It, it just depends. I, I hope to, because, you know, it was one of the things that got me going in the first place. It's just, it's so difficult right now. I've struggled to get the uploads I do do done. Um, I just said do do. Um, because it just takes so much out of me now, which is a real shame. Plus, I'm putting in more editing to my videos now, which means that they do take a bit longer to make, but not a huge amount longer, just a little bit longer. Um, but I just thought I'd take some more care over the videos, and I'd rather put out one really strong video each day than two sort of rushed ones. And that, that for me, is I, I want to provide good quality content rather than just quantity. You know, it, it's important for me uh, to do that. Obviously, I'm sure that there's a way of doing both, but I want to find a balance and find some way to do that. So I'm going to try at some point. What might happen eventually is that it might settle into being one upload a day. However, what I'll probably do is some double upload weekends and double upload days and stuff. That's what I plan to try and ease my way back in, essentially. Um, other thing is, I do sometimes get comments about this, about what microphone I use. This microphone that you're hearing me talk through now is a Blue Yeti. Um, not really like an entry-level microphone. Um, the best thing I could recommend if you're just starting out and you've got a little bit of money, but not a huge amount, is to get a Blue Snowball. Um, either the normal one or the ICE model. Uh, I had the ICE model and that worked totally fine. Uh, in fact, yeah, I might, start, I might give that away at some point um, because it's still under my desk, but... It's, I think you can pick them up for about 40 quid. It depends, because Amazon are a bit iffy with their prices sometimes. Um, so, yeah, that, that's what I would recommend for a start. But this is the Blue Yeti. I don't know. I got this one on sale. I think it was about £90. Um, and I think... I don't know what they're on Amazon at the moment for, but they're very good microphones. It's just, you know... You, there's no need to have one of these when you're just starting out, really. I only bought this because I wanted to see if I could get that little bit of extra quality out of the audio. Um... So yeah, I also apologise for the audio going a bit funny on last night's episode of um, From the Shadows. Not all of you will have watched that, of course, but I thought I'd put it on here just to get it out there quickly, those of you who did. I did put a giant message on the screen when it went wrong, but I still got comments about it, which was a little bit weird. And I think that's probably because not everyone actually watches. Some people just listen, um, which would make sense. So basically, it was just because the raw audio file, because I recorded into a separate uh, separate track, got corrupted somehow, and it meant that I had to use the uh, footage, the audio from the actual video track, which is obviously never as higher quality, basically, and it was a little bit distorted for some reason. Uh, but hopefully today, and from now on, it should be back to normal. I don't know what went wrong. And hey, we move on. Right, let's do a question of the day. Um, so today's question is a nice, simple one. I've added a new batch of questions to the question of the day. And it's a nice, simple one. And that is, what is your favourite song? And my favourite song at the moment, um, and it has been for about the last six months, is a song called Sunrise by a band called Last, uh, Our Last Night. I would put a clip of it now, but you know, copyright and that. Um, so there you go. What's your favourite song? And if you do have any ideas for a question of the day, drop it in the comments with the hashtag at QOTD. Right. Um, in the last episode, we were pretty much comfortably beaten by Chelsea. The only sort of positive that we could take from that game was the fact that Marcelo Di Placido scored himself yet another goal. And um, I just want to start off this proper part of the episode by saying I'm pretty certain this guy could be Millington-esque. He... I'm, I'm not joking. You'll see what I mean when we get into this month's footage. Or not footage, you know what I mean. Wow. Um, okay, so we started things off then in the league, back at home against Inter Milan. And things started off about as good as you could expect. You'll notice that Romelu Lukaku is actually playing for Inter Milan now, which is quite cool. Um, we were brilliant. We've we've had some lucky results against Inter last year, but this year we finally sort of took it to them. And that was lovely to see. Di Placido gave us the lead on 17 minutes. Before Lukaku did actually level things up for them. Placido then put us back in front before half-time. They then levelled, which I thought was a little unfair. It was just... I thought that we had the rub of the green at that point, and we were about to get the result and get a third goal, but unfortunately Lukaku equalised for them. Thankfully, Andrea Zivkovic with an absolutely belting free kick. Oh, he's got... A, that's one thing I really want to keep about him, is those free kicks. My God. Save the day for us there, making it 3-2. But two more goals for Marcelo Di Placido, and what more can you possibly want uh, from a player right now? Next up, we had Sampdoria, and I hope that we could do better than we did. I think we actually lost 4-2 to them last time as well. Um, it just wasn't to be. We, we weren't good. We, we just... We're not quite there yet. We need a little bit more money. I have tried asking the board for 
a transfer fund upgrade, but they're not having it. Um, that's the issue. Um, I, I've asked them for more funds, but they're, they're not up for that at the moment. So, you know, we've got a little bit more of transfer percentage, but unfortunately that makes no difference to us now because we've already sold the player for the big money, uh, which is a little bit disappointing. We actually did take the lead, though, through Giuseppe Di Laurentiis um, against the run of play somewhat, though, before Emil, uh, Pierre-Emil Huyberg made it th uh, made it 13. That would be impressive. Made it 1-1. Uh, then it was Andrea Varani to make it through uh, to make it 2-1. Robert... Um, Obviously not the same Robert uh, as Gauthier Robert, making it 3-1. And um, yeah, we did then get one back through, of course, Marcelo Di Placido, continuing his record of scoring in every single match that he has so far played for Roma. And more on that in a minute. Robert then made it 4-2 almost immediately afterwards, and they got what they deserved in the end, really. But the fact is, we still kept... We scored a couple of goals, plus uh, Placido got himself a goal as well, which is good. I do also have to show you some Belgium games, too. That's how much many games I've played this month. It's been a bit of a long one for me, really. Uh, it took quite a while. Next up, we have Bari. Uh, Bari really quite struggling this year and I think we probably could have had more goals in this one but they weren't awful it has to be said uh, Ricardo Caterini getting himself uh, not such much of a rare goal in fact he got man of the match for this one because I believe he assisted on one of uh, Di Placido's other goals Di Placido made it 2-0 uh, getting yet another goal for us Joris Sikora, um formerly of, of course of Aston Villa now playing for Bari he must be I think he's like 34 uh, I, don't know, I think I had a look and I'm pretty sure he was 34 years old 35 now okay he must have had a birthday uh, nope. Okay. <laughs> okay, I was close. And then Placido made it 3-1 with yet another break. He loves it. I don't think he's ever got a hat-trick for us, but the point is he's banging in goals left, right, centre, up and down, all over the place, basically. Um, and a 3-1 win in the league to keep that sort of decent league run going. We next up had Atletico at home in the yeah, Champions League. And i got to tell you guys, I was absolutely, absolutely, I was absolutely gutted about this. They managed two shots on target in the entire game. Um... And that wasn't the worst thing about it, because the first shot was a free kick, which was saved, and the second shot was the ball being put in the back of the net on the rebound um, from Jeffrey Everard. And I was annoyed as hell, because we controlled every aspect of this game, created tons of chances. It took us until the 85th minute for Marcelo Di Placido, of course, who else, to equalise for us. But I really think we should have won this game, and we deserved it fully, but we just didn't take our chances, and that was the problem. We just weren't there to take the chances. Placido continuing his scoring record, though, unbelievably. I really want to see if he can do it again. Um, next up, we had Cagliari, and we never... Cagliari? Cagliari. And we have gone on a bit of a scoring run now, which is lovely to see. A 4-3 win away from home as well, no less, at Cagliari. Um, now, this was a bit of a topsy-turvy game for us, really. First off, of course, Marcelo Di Placido, 16 minutes into the game, scoring <laughs> to make it 1-0. Then, Dennis Kettel uh, Kettelson made it 1-1 with Cagliari getting themselves back into the game. We then took our chances and went back in front again through Ricardo Caterini. Well... They, they weren't having that. So back they came with Marco, uh, Michael Gasparoni to make it 2 all. They were giving us a real fight in this one, to be fair to them. Um, then they actually took the lead through Gasparoni not long after that. Then we managed to, managed to win ourselves a penalty through Andrea Zivkovic. And then 91st minute, Marcelo Di Placido, this time with an absolutely bulleting header at the near post. Bang! 4-3, huge result, another brace for Di Placido. I can't remember how many goals, I'm going to show you how many he's got, it's a lot. And um, would you believe it, in the next match, Di Placido, yet again, he has scored in every single game that Roma have played this month, and he's still managed to score at least one goal in every single game that he has played for Roma since he signed for us. I don't, even Millington didn't do that. I just wonder how long he can keep that going. We're playing Levski Sofia today. The chances are looking high, is what I would say on that one. Um, we got off to an absolute flyer here with Capra and Zivkovic getting early goals. They did get on back from Victor Andrade, and as you can see, they had a lot of shots in this one. Um, they were actually hitting the target, quite a few from range, but they were still hitting the target with them. And Milan Manila, uh, sorry, Malina's goal was fantastic, to be fair, to bring things right back in here after Christian Peluso had made it 3-1. So 3-2 going into the final few moments of the game, and then Marcelo Di Placido, just when he thought he wasn't going to get a goal, in stoppage time, breaking through the defence to make it 4-2 to Roma. And that is exactly... Ah, uh, I noticed that Emerson Hyman, of course, who's currently at Fulham, it actually plays... He always seems to move to Italy on my saves. I don't know if anyone else has noticed that. I don't suppose you would have done. But I always find that he ends up in Italy for some reason. Even though he's American and he plays in the UK, he always seems to end up playing for, like, Fiorentina or someone like that. Right, let's move over to Belgium, <laughs> briefly. So, I thought that... Um, Someone told me in the comments that when I'm getting told about being sacked and that, it was another newspaper from, like, the other country trying to stir up trouble... I, it was that time, but ever since then, it's actually been a proper notification. Like, there's not been any news article stuff. It's literally been them saying that the pressure is mounting on me, which is utterly absurd. Um, so, the only games we've played, we played Macedonia, and as you can see, a hat-trick for Gauthier Robert. 
I mean, what more do you want? And then we had Scotland. I really hoped we could win this one, but we weren't quite up to it, unfortunately. Uh, goals from Chris Cooper, Stephen Slade, and George Kerr getting the wins. Uh, not getting the win, but getting the draw for Scotland. We need just a point. Um, <clears throat> from our last two matches to secure qualification. We'll probably get there anyway, but I really wanted to wrap it up with a winner um, at Hamden. But we didn't manage to quite do it. Um, we've got some more games, but they don't come till um, November, so they'll be in the next episode. I'm thinking... Mm, I don't know. I don't really see the point in live coming these ones because they're pretty much dead cert wins. I mean, we won comfortably away at Poland. I'd rather wait until we got to the major tournament um, at the end of next season, which I believe is going to be the Euros. Um, yeah, of course it's the Euros. To get before we get into that sort of stuff, right? Uh, let's go back and go into the squad. So, um, as you can see, so far, eleven. Uh, as you can see, he's a bit jaded, and I do want to rest him, but I will rest him once he ends this streak. Basically, um, fifteen goals he has scored in eleven starts. I'm in shock, to be honest. That is an unbelievable goal return. That is Millington-esque, frankly. And if he keeps that up, then I just. I don't even know what to say about the lad anymore. Um, Zivkovic into second there with four, but we finally got ourselves a proven goal scorer quite clearly. As for assists, Zivkovic, Katarini, and Kapra have four apiece. Man of the match, Zivkovic and Di Placido, despite scoring those goals, actually only has two man of the match awards. Average rating, of course, is miles ahead of everyone else for him. And Zivkovic has done a bloody good job this month too. Key pass-wise, well, of course, that is actually Katarini with 46. Value-wise, it's looking a little bit better, but we need to get players like Lorenzo and Wang Jong Ho back. He is the key for us. Him getting him back, I think, will make us a much stronger team. But we're doing our best at the moment. This is how the league looks at the moment. We're sitting in third, um, only a point behind Inter. Obviously, we both have a game in hand. As Cecina actually were, remember, fourth in the league when we played them, and they were actually second, I think, at the time. So yeah, there you go. Di Placido, of course, eleven goals in seven league matches as well, which is crazy. A win for us today, um, of course, doesn't make any difference because this is, of course, a Champions League game. So why are we even looking at that? But we are playing Lesgi Sofia. But the point is, we've got game in hand. We can actually go very close to Juventus with that. Right, let's get going before things get a little bit uh, too drawn out. So, I'm trying to think if there's anything else to talk about. I don't think there is. Um, nope. Right, let's go. Um, so, yeah, Lesgi Sofia. We are at home. I fully expect the win. Let's put it that way. I want to try and get into that um, second spot. You know, it's still up for grabs there. I think if we were going to be... If we were going to do that, we needed to beat Atletico at home, really. But we're going to give it a good crack. I think third place is uh, comfortably ours if we want it, provided we get the win over Levski home and away. That's basically all we need to do in those games. Uh, I'm going to do a quick pick. I will put him back in if my assistant takes him out, which he won't because he's just that good. So we're going to go with Di Placido, Garcia, Capra, Catalini, Falcao, Zivkovic, Lamantia, Peluso, Arapi, and Mainardi. Um, the fans aren't liking Mainardi at the moment. <clears throat> He hasn't had the best, fit, you know, a 6.52 overall average of the last few games is not great. But then look at Alban Arapi. Our defenders have kind of struggled a little bit, but we do need to strengthen there. That is, that goes without saying. It's just been really difficult to find anyone that will actually join us, unfortunately. Uh, I really wanted that Brazilian lad. I would have probably taken him over Di Placido, to be honest, if the choice was there. But now I'm kind of glad I went with that choice. Let's put it that way. So let's get into things. Um, Roma versus Levski Sofia. We should be able to beat them. Um... If the Christmas tree comes out firing today, with the way we've been playing lately, I see no reason why we can't win this game comfortably. And even if we don't win it comfortably, as long as we win it, that is the main thing. Let's face it. This is processing forever now. I hate when it does that. Just randomly processes for no apparent reason for ages. Uh, this is where the game just crashes. There we go. Finally. Christ on a bike. Uh, okay. Right, sorry, I have got my settings back to normal again. Sorry, I haven't actually recorded any episodes since my stream. <clears throat> but obviously I had to play it on a different settings when I was streaming. Uh, right, we are one to six favourites for this one, so we should have this one in the bag. They've got Samuel Gomez, Gamakov, uh, Vujosevic, uh, Marcos Vin uh, Vinicius, uh, Pri Pribiyi, Krishko, uh, Biro Biro, or Biro Biro, Benno, and Abdullawi, and obviously Zinel in goal. So there's some interesting uh, names actually at Levski Sofia. Let's see what Herman Burgos has got for us. And uh, okay, there we go, big Burgos. Hopefully, Di Placido. Can, I, mean, I think, you know, he scored in some brilliant games against big sides. If he doesn't score against Levski Sofia, I would put that down to his tiredness, I guess. But I just want to see how long he can keep this streak going. Um, and then I will give him a rest, basically. That's the way I'm looking at it. Chelsea already lead the Atletico through Kingsley Chukwuma, who I'm pretty sure two men to... Well, they're 3-0 up inside 11 minutes. Um, that's impressive. Perhaps our result against Chelsea wasn't quite so bad after all. That 5-2 result, we scored twice against them. Atletico have already conceded three times. Looks like this group is going to get pretty much what... The Chelsea are seven points clear after three matches at this rate. Caterini now. Into the... Well, can he pick a pass out? Why is... They move... They seem to be moving very slowly at the moment. Um, Maybe just finding their feet, I guess. Capra. Di Placido needs to make some space for himself, but they all seem to be... They're certainly man-marking him as much as they can do, but I'm sure he can still find himself a, a little area of space. Zivkovic bombing forward and pulling the shot wide to the right-hand side there. But 
so far so good Pos- plenty of possession oh great set piece time win that header oh oh wow that was a very close one Falcao should mop this up and we might have a chance for a break here if he can get the ball down the wing but nobody is running onto it unfortunately um right everything is looking good so far uh, here we go Zivkovic with the free kick top corner and what more I just what more do you need from this lad Zivko, I think three of those five goals have been bre- absolutely beautiful free kicks along those kind of lines and at the halfway stage it would actually give us a two-point lead over Atleto which is a good start and you know no, we could pull something off uh, but I don't see that happening somehow terrible weather here in central Rome here but a wonderful free kick from Zivkovic top corner goalkeeper nowhere near it 1-0 to Roma and that is the result that we needed but we still need a Placido goal that is the thing if we don't get a Placido goal I'll be so disappointed given how good he's been against some of the really bigger sides for him to not score against Levski would be a bit of a shame actually um right let's do this try and g him up a little bit for the second half it might just be because he is so jaded at the moment but i just wanted to see how long he could keep the streak going really uh, okay let's do this second half we've got the lead now we can sort of sit back and relax and do what we need to do and that's just catch him on the break uh into the Placido. he can run at people for, for days basically so hopefully he will continue to do that <clears throat> katarini out wide to garcia now can he get a ball in and he's tackled by Abdullawi there out on the left-hand side. Um, hmm, okay. Oh, great, another injury. We just cannot seem to stop the injuries with Roma. They just seem to be completely... Mm, this is the one position we cannot afford an injury either, really, is it? Damn. Um, anyone in the team? that can, Nobody can really play that apart from Garcia. That was another position I was really looking to strengthen, but we just have had no money. Um, right. Since it's a wing position, I'm going to bring on Elvis there, since he's just as good as anyone else there, it would seem. And he's got a little bit of pace. But Garcia is such a huge part of this team. That could be dangerous for us, actually, not having that option out there. I'm hoping that Elvis might be able to fill in there just fine enough. Um, as long as we get the win, that's what really matters to me, to be honest. Even if it is just a 1-0 and it's that Zivkovic goal that separates us, it would not exactly be a classic result. And Di Placido wouldn't have gotten the score sheet, but it is all about the results in these games. Let, you know, let's not forget that. And a good tackle in the end there from Arapi. Doing well there. Katarini now to Mainardi. Can he pick a pass? That goes back to Zivkovic out on the right-hand side. <clears throat> Katarini plays that into absolute... What is that? Who are you passing that to? It's literally as if he's passing it directly to their defender because there's nobody out there. There's nobody running through. There's no... Anything, really. Capra. Ball over the top, perhaps. Out wide to Caterini. Can he pick a better pass out this time? He does. Di Placido dropping a little bit deeper. He needs runners running beyond him, really. Zivkovic. He's going to have to make the room himself now. Zivkovic cutting inside into Capra. Now, can he pick a pass? Into Di Placido. Can he turn his man? He's got a good strike on him. Oh, what a strike that is from Di Placido. That is what I mean. He's got that kind of Oberfemi Martins style of, like... It almost looks like he does no backlift. Like he'll just turn into space. Bang. Top corner. I don't know if that was actually top corner. Let's have a little gander. But Capra eventually does pick him up. But look at this. Gets the ball with his back to goal. Finds a little bit of space. And then just shimmies and boom. Oh, it's not quite in the top corner. It's not quite where the scissors live, but it was up there. 2-0. Um, and Di Placido scored a goal. I'm going to make another sub here just to... Um, uh, actually, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. This will please you. I'm going to get Di Placido off because he scored a goal now. And that's all I wanted to do. Um, we're going to get Slavi Danchev on. And since he seems to comment on these videos now, we're going to get you on, mate. So, dear, stop having a go at me. Um, right. And I'm actually going to make a final substitution now as well. I'm going to get House Theater on uh, for Katarini just because he's lacking a little bit in terms of fitness. And we've got some important games coming up. But a 2 0 lead should be enough to see this one out. You never know. Slavi Danchev may get us a goal. You know, he wasn't a bad substitute last season, really. Ball in. Peluso now. Oh, Vyoshevich. So, we get a tackle in. Eduardo turning his man and it's a good strike from Eduardo but it's hit the post and thank god because we really could do with a clean sheet in today's game um goal difference wise not that it's that important but at least we're doing better than Atletico who seem to have managed to stem the flow a little bit at Chelsea and have uh, stopped themselves from leaking as many goals as they did in the first 11 minutes a 2-0 win is hardly emphatic but you know Zivkovic and Di Placido getting the goals Di Placido scoring his 16th goal of the season and getting an assist and somehow not man of the match actually with that but there you go assisting on the first one and scoring the second one the man is a machine ladies and gentlemen the man is a machine and hopefully he'll continue to do that um for the entire season you know if we lose him things could go bad for us but the fact is keeping him in this team i think you know we could take on someone like napoli and maybe have a good crack at them and not lose eight nil like we did last time around christ um so let's take a little look at the schedule and see what we got coming up um i'm thinking that oh, i would like to do the napoli game but it's too close really um i'm thinking the next reasonable game that we could do really would be the uh the chelsea game to be honest um and then we may have to do a shorter episode there um in which 
it depends on how what's on the line going into that game, really, I suppose. Uh, but I'm going to do another big bumper episode, uh, just in case that we do have to do a slightly shorter one with less games. That way we'll get plenty of... That way it still equates to the same amount of games overall. I'll just do, you know, two longer episodes and then one shorter one. It might just have to be how it works. Um, so, yeah, we'll do the Chelsea game um, at... Uh, the, uh, the Stadio, is it the Stadio Olimpico? I can't remember what our stadium's called. How stupid am I? It is the... Olympico. I assume that is the same thing. Um, but there we go, guys. So, um, yeah. If you like what we've seen, please do drop a like on the video. That'd be fantastic. If we could get it to 150 likes, that would be even better. If you liked it even more than that, I've just smashed my hand on the table. Um, then please do um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys in the next episode for a home game against Chelsea, which could be... Well, I can't see us winning it, but you just never know what we can do at home in the Champions League. Who knows? Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.